So the ATF is doubling down to try and dismiss the Texas law, which removes the NFA and ATF's regulation of made in Texas suppressors. And the ATF is now arguing that the second amendment does not apply to suppressors. So let's talk about this. So like I said in the intro, the ATF is now doubling down to get the Texas suppressor freedom lawsuit thrown out because they claim that suppressors are not protected under the second amendment or the recent New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin decision. In the ATF's recent reply in support of their motion to dismiss, the ATF takes the position that the recent Supreme Court decision in Bruin has no impact on their authority as a regulatory agency to regulate suppressors and other items under the NFA because they claim that these are not firearms and therefore the Second Amendment does not protect these items. This response by the ATF comes in direct response to the state of Texas recently amending their lawsuit against the DOJ in the Made in Texas Suppressor lawsuit. The lawsuit is now using the recent Supreme Court decision in Bruin to argue that the ATF and NFA have no history or tradition which supports their control of these items. Well, recently the ATF filed a motion to have the case dismissed and just submitted a reply in support of that motion. In the reply, they argued that the recent Supreme Court decision in Bruin does not bear at all on this case because they allege that suppressors are not protected by the Second Amendment since they are not bearable arms in the ATF's eyes and also they claim that the NFA and that taxation in the NFA has a long-standing history. Now, if you're not familiar with what this all involves, let me explain real quick. This lawsuit arises out of Texas House Bill 957, which passed last year. HB 957 aimed to exempt from federal regulation all suppressors that are made in Texas and remain in Texas. HB 957 exempted silencers and suppressors which are manufactured in Texas and which remain in Texas and never cross any state borders. The claim behind this law is that since these items are made and sold in the state of Texas, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore fall outside the purview of federal regulation by the ATF. After Texas passed this law last year, the ATF sent out a letter essentially threatening that they will enforce the NFA and GCA's regulations against these made in Texas suppressors and that they will enforce it against anyone who buys, sells, or makes these items. After the ATF sent out that letter, Texas and the Attorney General of Texas filed a lawsuit against the ATF on behalf of individual Texas plaintiffs in trying to find that the NFA and GCA and the ATF's regulation of made in Texas suppressors is not valid and also that it's not valid under the Second Amendment. In response to this lawsuit filed by Texas, the DOJ and the ATF responded by filing their first motion to dismiss. A motion to dismiss is simply a legal mechanism where one side is trying to seek the case to get thrown out by the court. And so that's essentially what the ATF was seeking. Now, initially on that initial motion to dismiss, it was not granted by the court, but then some other things changed, including that the Supreme Court issued their ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. Under the Bruin framework, the state of Texas is arguing that the ATF cannot prove that their regulation of made in Texas suppressors has any basis in history or tradition of the Second Amendment dating back to 1791. That is the standard that was reaffirmed in Bruin. However, the ATF in their recent motion to dismiss, they filed a new motion to dismiss and they also filed a reply in support of that. They are essentially arguing that the court here should forget what the Supreme Court said in Bruin and instead should take the position that suppressors are not bearable arms and are not protected under the Second Amendment. The ATF in their motion to dismiss and their reply also reject the historical analysis that the Supreme Court requires and instead the ATF is still using the old long-standing history arguments that the Supreme Court recently rejected. In the relevant portion of the ATF's motion to dismiss, they argue, this case should be dismissed because plaintiffs have failed to state a claim under the Second Amendment, even assuming that the court has jurisdiction to hear this case. The court should still grant defendants motion to dismiss because plaintiffs have failed to state a claim. One of the main reasons they claim the case should be dismissed is because they claim that suppressors are not bearable arms within the meaning of the Second Amendment. And the ATF just doubled down on that argument in the reply in support of their motion to dismiss. The ATF claims that Texas has a burden of proving certainty of success on the merits based on the information available at this time. The ATF argues that Texas has not come close to meeting that high threshold for several reasons. First, unanimous precedent holds that the Second Amendment does not apply to suppressors, they state, based on the text and history of the Second Amendment. Nothing in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin calls those decisions in question since they functionally apply the same text and history standard as Bruin. The ATF also argues second, that even if the second amendment applied to suppressors, plaintiffs claim that the NFA's tax scheme is inconsistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation is questionable at best, they said. The NFA is a longstanding tax statute 
that has been repeatedly upheld under Congress's taxing power in the face of the Second Amendment and those challenges. By contrast, they state, plaintiffs do not and cannot cite a single case holding that the NFA's making requirements are unconstitutional based on the Second Amendment or any other basis. But then the ATF goes on to concede in this reply a fact that is very, very relevant. They state, to be sure, no court has yet had the opportunity to consider the NFA based on Bruin. So there the ATF concedes that the NFA has not been challenged yet under the Bruin standards, but then they tried to argue that Bruin will not alter any precedent in regards to the NFA and the taxation of these types of items. However, I think you and I know that Bruin will definitely impact the NFA and the GCA, and it's only a matter of time before Bruin is applied against the NFA and those other statutes. The ATF goes on to say that, as alleged in plaintiff's own complaint, ATF is not arbitrarily delaying applications, but rather seeking additional information when necessary. ATF's request for additional information is wholly consistent with the NFA's requirement that applications to make firearms shall be denied if the making or possession of the firearm would place the person making the firearm in violation of law. Now, this section of their argument is really critical, and I want to point out what's actually happening here and the kind of contradiction that's happening here. In the ATF's motion to dismiss and in their reply, the ATF argues that suppressors are not protected by the Second Amendment because they are not bearable arms and because they are not firearms. However, as we all know, the NFA and the ATF claim that they have authority to regulate suppressors and the making of suppressors because they claim that suppressors in their own right, by definition, are actual firearms. And in that last statement that the ATF talks about, then they're talking about the application to make firearms, i.e. to make suppressors, they're actually treating them to be actual firearms. So you can see the legal inconsistencies that are going on in these papers. When it's convenient, they argue that these are in fact firearms, but when it's not convenient for them, they will argue that these are not firearms, they are not bearable arms, and that they are not protected by the Second Amendment, and therefore Bruin doesn't apply. Also, the fact that the NFA has existed since the 1930s is not a longstanding history. In Bruin, the majority opinion said that relevant history is history dating back to 1791, and maybe you can argue for the ratification of the 14th Amendment, but it's not actually the 1930s. In fact, the New York law, which was struck down, is even older than the NFA. So the ATF in the reply is simply doubling down on these really bad arguments that suppressors are not firearms, that they are not protected by the Second Amendment, and also that Bruin does not apply to suppressors and the regulation of suppressors, and that Bruin would not impact the NFA at all. So we will definitely be keeping our eyes on this case to see what the court decides to do if they buy the ATF's arguments that suppressors are not bearable arms protected by the Second Amendment. That's going to be a really interesting uh, analysis if the court does agree with them. So again, if we get any more updates, I will let you all know. Also, I want to thank one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. Recently, this last weekend, I got to go out to the USCCA headquarters. I got to go through all of their classroom education and also their range training, their defensive pistol use, and also the rifle course that they're coming out with. When I tell you that it is very surprising the level of education and training that they have are creating and are putting out there, um, it is absolutely amazing. A lot of us that went out there were very surprised with what USCCA is offering. So I highly recommend you guys check them out. Not only will you get high level education and training, but you will also get that self-defense liability protection. So again, thank you USCCA. And if you're interested, you can find a link to them down in the detail section. Also like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impact this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this is the Built by Arm Scholars, and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.